And now by the Trump campaign national spokesperson, Katrina Pearson. Katrina, thank you so much for your time. Hi, Tamron. Let's talk about Donald Trump's uphill battle to unite the party. You heard Peter Alexander mention Lindsey Graham's tweet. He says, if we nominate Trump, we will get destroyed and we deserve it. Nebraska Senator Ben Sass pointed to his Facebook post in February. He says, if Donald Trump becomes the Republican nominee, my expectation is that I will look for some third party candidate, a conservative option, a constitutionalist, former advisor to John McCain, Mark Salter wrote, the GOP is going to nominate for president a guy who reads the National Enquirer and thinks it's on the level. I'm with her. Clearly a reference to the slogan for Hillary Clinton. BuzzFeed, just one more for you, compiled several images tweeted out from Republican voters tearing up, burning, or destroying, destroying their voter registration cards in reaction to what happened last night. Well, you know, Tamron, uh, emotions are definitely high. Yes, this was a very contentious primary. Uh, but at the end of the day, uh, there will be an opponent, and her name is Hillary Clinton. And even though these Republicans say they won't support Donald Trump, uh, we ran into this uh, two cycles ago. These same Republicans who were pushing the constitutional conservative message, which really hasn't been viable since 1989 when the party stopped governing that way, Bush number one raised taxes, gave us the Clean Air Act of 1990, uh, created NAFTA that Bill Clinton ultimately signed. Bush number two did worse. He gave us No Child Left Behind, the Wall Street bailouts, eviscerated the Constitution with the Patriot Act. These are also not extremely conservative issues, but the party came together behind them. I didn't want to vote for McCain, and his conservative review scorecard is an F, and not just any F, but a 37 percent. At the end of the day, when the contrast is made, if a Republican wants to stop Hillary Clinton, they will support Donald Trump. Well, looking at what Donald Trump said yesterday regarding not wanting the support of some within the party, he said that they'd been nasty, um, to be clear, just a few hours before calling Ted Cruz a formidable uh, contender or, or a, a good campaign. He tried to link Ted Cruz's father to the assassination of JFK. Fast forward, it's as if none of that happened. He, Donald Trump, has been accused, and there is plenty of proof of providing some of the nastiest allegations in presidential history, some have said. Um, so when he refers to those who've been nasty to him that he does not want their support, can you tell me some of those that he's referencing? Well, I think in the context of the JFK, Donald Trump was pointing out the absurdities because there wasn't a replay of all of the absurdities that were said leading up to that context, like Senator Ted Cruz being anointed as the chosen one, a Baptist who was brought onto the earth to fulfill the Mormon prophecy. Of course, there have been a lot of absurdities out there, and he was pointing to those things. But I'll also say that there are going to be some of those people who aren't very principled when it comes to defeating Hillary Clinton. It's about themselves. We have think tanks in Washington, D.C., who make a living at philosophy of conservatism. But as I've mentioned, the candidates nominated in two cycles prior were not conservatives, and everyone got around them. So, so Donald Trump, Trump is embracing that force. he's not a conservative. At this point, he's embracing that he is not a conservative. No, what I'm saying is that they're saying he's not a conservative. At the same time, they embraced candidates who were not conservative. So the argument is going to fail. And when they do see that contrast compared to Hillary Clinton, Donald Trump mm -hmm. is a conservative, particularly when it comes to jobs in the economy, which is where mm -hmm. a lot of conservatives are. They're going to come around. And to those individuals who don't want to support Donald Trump, never had any intention of supporting Donald Trump, there are Republicans mm -hmm. out there who would rather keep things the same because they do belong to a lot of those special interests that Donald Trump is a great threat to. Let's look at just a few of the names out there. Has the Trump campaign reached out to Jeb Bush for his support? You know, I'm not sure if Mr. Trump has reached out to anyone at this point. Um, there are a lot of people reaching out to the campaign. Well, he, we know support. he's reached out to Ben Carson. We know he has the support of Chris Christie, for example. And he yes. says that he'd be willing and reach wanting out to Mr. the support Trump. of Senator Cruz. So what about some of the other big names that he defeated that he may need to bring uh, in to unite the party? Marco Rubio, Jeb Bush come to mind. Well, you're absolutely right. Ben Carson and Chris Christie did reach out to Mr. Trump, and they told him that they see the movement that he has, uh, the, the ability to bring in new voters, which is extremely important. Um, but Mr. Trump is going to consider 
everyone. He does want people to reach out to him. He's going to reach out to other people. This just happened last night. Let's give it a week for the dust to settle so that Mr. Trump can get used to being the GOP nominee, start thinking about these vice presidential picks, and he is going to unite the party. But when you say the dust um, perhaps will settle, there is a lot of dust that he kicked <laughs> up in the air. Let's just look at the numbers. He has an it wasn't 88, just him. He has an 88% negative with African-American voters. He brought this up last night that he would bring in the black vote. Hispanics, 79% negatives. Women, 69% negatives. People between the age of 18 and 34, 75% negative view of Donald Trump at this point. How does the dust settle on some of the images that we saw at the rally and some of the rallies and some of the things uh, that have come from the candidate, now the presumptive nominee, likely nominee? Well, because of hundreds of millions of dollars in attack ads, 65,000 ads to be exact, he mentioned that last night, of course, there's going to be a negative perception. But now Mr. Trump can focus on communicating to the general population about his visions and not what the media context has been. And these rallies have been exposed for what they are paid organized protesters, Bernie Sanders supporters, La Raza supporters, they're burning American flags. These are not Trump supporters and Americans are starting to see that. And Tamron, once Mr. Trump gets out on the trail with his general election philosophy contrasting with Hillary Clinton, those numbers will go down. I know your, can, uh, your campaign has brought up this Rasmussen fold that shows Donald Trump up two points over Hillary Clinton in a head-to-head -head matchup, but Real Clear Politics has an average of polls where Hillary Clinton is at 46% Donald Trump at 40 percent. Um, she beats him by as much as 11 points in the latest USA Today Suffolk poll. In a general election matchup, this is a good one here, Katrina, Utah from the Desert News, um, which is very significant because according to Gallup, Utah is the third most Republican state in the union. In Utah, a matchup, you see it there. Hillary Clinton right now ahead of Donald Trump in the polling in the third most Republican state in the union. Is he really happy to be facing off against Hillary Clinton? Oh, absolutely, uh, mainly because Hillary Clinton has never been truly vetted before. Hillary uh, Clinton has never been vetted before? I mean, never been truly vetted before. How many times has Hillary Clinton been asked about the specific role in Benghazi outside of the testimony? There were never really outside any Outside of the testimony pulled there together were never really by any the Republican-led to committee. So you believe that Hillary Clinton, and I just want to make sure that they were clear on this, the former Secretary of State, um, you talk about the money spent against Donald Donald Trump to perhaps demonize him, the, the millions of dollars that have been spent against the Clintons, both as a first lady and the secretary of state and a senator for the state of New York, which she has received contributions from your candidate, that this, that Hillary Clinton has not been properly vetted. No, there's an entire generation of voters out there that know nothing about Hillary Clinton other than what they've heard in the last two to three years. There is plenty of information that needs to be discussed on top of the, the, the Clinton Foundation, which has not been fully discussed has in the Donald media, Trump which is extremely important. Vetted? Has Donald Trump been properly vetted? He is one of the most well-known individuals in the world. His name on many buildings in major cities. Has Donald Trump been properly vetted? He is in the process of being vetted, and he's only been a politician for the last 10 to 11 months. This is going to be a clear contrast in vision and philosophy for the future of the American people. And I'm sorry, Tamron, but the average person, even women, they're not okay with ISIS infiltrated Syrian refugees posting up in their neighborhoods. They're not okay with pushing away the American dream for their children to illegal aliens. They are not okay with their Social Security benefits going to people who should not be in this country. There will be a contrast, and th those numbers will go down for Donald Trump. Part of the just quickly here, one of the things uh, regarding vetting of Donald Trump has been uh, the audit that he says um, he's experiencing, and that's why he's not released his taxes at this point. Um, is he prepared now that he is the presumptive nominee, likely nominee, to at least allow that vetting par part of the process to move forward since he is able to release his tax information from those years in which he has not been, has not been audited? Oh, yes. Mr. Trump has said from the beginning that when this audit is finished, he has no trouble releasing his taxes. But there are other years that are not wise. audited. 
But it's very wise not to release your taxes in pieces, mm. and that's extremely important just because we do know of the scrutiny that's going to be through his tax return. So he is going to wait, and he did say he would release them. All right, we'll see when that happens. Katrina, thank you so much. It's a great thing. Hey there, I'm Chris Hayes from MSNBC. Thanks for watching MSNBC on YouTube. If you want to keep up to date with the videos we're putting out, you can click subscribe just below me or click over on this list to see lots of other great videos.